The death of Qasim Soleimani strengthened the hand of hardliners, experts say, and undermined those who have tried to normalize relations with the West. In cities across Iran, tens of thousands packed the streets to mourn Maj. Gen. Qasim Soleimani. Black-clad women and men beat their chests and clutched photos of him. A black flag went up on the golden dome of Imam Reza shrine in the city of Mashhad, one of the holiest sites of Shiite Islam. Just a few weeks earlier, the streets were filled with protesters angry with their leaders over the flailing economy and the country's international isolation. But at least for now, Iran is united, in anger at the United States. For years, it has been a divided nation led by aged revolutionaries determined to impose their will on a predominantly young population with no memory of the Shah, who was deposed in the 1979 Islamic Revolution, and with a thirst to live in a more normal nation integrated into the world. Suddenly, with one targeted assassination, the nation rallied behind its leaders. Young and old, rich and poor, hardliner and reformer, General Suleimani, Iran's most powerful military leader, was almost universally admired and had near-cult figure status. After being killed in Baghdad on Friday in a drone strike ordered by President Trump, his image is now plastered across Tehran, shrouded in black drapes. Without doubt the people of Iran will take revenge for this horrific criminal act, tweeted the president, Hassan Rouhani, a leader who once advocated diplomacy and integration with the West. In Iraq on Saturday, tens of thousands of pro-Iranian fighters marched through the capital, Baghdad, vowing to exact revenge on the United States at a funeral procession for two revered Iraqi military figures who were also killed in the attack on General Soleimani. And back in Iran, politicians and ordinary people of all stripes voiced support for the vow by the supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, that severe revenge awaits those criminals, who killed the general. The assassination appears to have solidified the hardliners' grip on power, neutralizing at least for the moment those who had called for talks with the West, experts inside and outside of Iran said. Iran's relative moderates like Mr. Ohani have been on the defensive since Mr. Trump withdrew from the 2015 nuclear deal and imposed an array of sanctions, contributing to Iran's sharp economic decline. That reversal bolstered hard-line critics who said it discredited those who had accepted American assurances. Moderates had nurtured fading hopes of renewed talks with Washington, possibly between the two presidents. Any talk of outreach or liberalization seems more dangerous than it has in years and is likely to fade from public debate for the time being. The prospect of negotiations with the United States, tweeted Sarah Masumi, a prominent reformist journalist, is now below zero. At least in the short term, this will create a rally to the flag, Suleimani was personally popular, said Valiar. Nasser, a Middle East scholar and former dean of Johns Hopkins University's School of Advanced International Studies. He predicted, an outpouring of emotion, both organic and whipped up by the government. Iran is bestowing honors on Mr. Suleimani as if he were a combination of statesman and saint. His body will circulate around shrines in all the holy cities of Shiite Islam from Samara, Qadimiya, Karbala and Najaf in Iraq to Mashhad and Qam in Iran. As his body makes its way to four Iranian cities over the next few days, large crowds are expected to attend and display their solidarity and defiance. This show of unity, however, could be short-lived. The deep grievances that ignited protests against the government in November still remain in place, economic hardship, international isolation and social oppression. Some Iranian opposition supporters have praised the assassination and are in favor of Washington increasing its maximum pressure policy on Iran's rulers. Just last month, mass anti-government protests shook Iran, showing deep discontent, which only grew with a brutal crackdown that killed as many as 1,000 people. Fury at the United States is now expected to deflect attention from the country's economic suffering in the recent protests. And the assassination may well provide Iran's leaders with an excuse to intensify its repression of dissenters and critics. General Soleimani's killing was the worst thing that could happen to civic movements in Iran and Iraq, said Amir Rashidi, an Iranian cybersecurity expert based in New York. It means more pressure on people who are already being squeezed politically and economically. In just a few days, the conflict between the United States and Iran has escalated dramatically. A rocket attack on a military base in Iraq killed an American on Friday, the United States blamed it on an Iran-backed militia and carried out airstrikes Sunday that killed some two dozen militia fighters. On Tuesday, militias swarmed the American embassy compound in Baghdad, breached the outer wall and set fire to some structures. 
General Suleimani led the Quds force of the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps, which conducts Iran's foreign military operations. He commanded Iranian forces battling the Islamic State in Iraq and Syria. He also headed Iran's role in arming, training and directing anti-ISIS Shiite militias. The American attack that killed him also killed the powerful leader of Iran-backed militias in Iraq, Abu Mahdi al-Muhandis. In addition, the general directed Iran's involvement with forces like the Houthi rebels in Yemen, Hezbollah in Lebanon and others that are in conflict with the United States and its regional allies, Israel and Saudi Arabia. The United States had labeled him a terrorist since 2007 and imposed economic sanctions on him. But in Iran, the government built up his public image as the person keeping the country safe. He went from a commander in the shadows to a household name, regularly seen in news videos directing troops in battle, meeting with allied leaders and reciting poetry about martyrdom. Qasim Suleimani has been seen as the public face of Iran's regional policy, said Sanam Bakal, a senior research fellow and leader of the Iran Forum at Chatham House, an international affairs institute based in London. Since the fight against ISIS, you've seen this surge of support for him. Iranians who are usually outspoken in support of human rights have turned to national solidarity and sorrow at his death. How soon we forget how close ISIS was to us and who defeated this monster, the actress Bahare Ranama posted on her Instagram account. One of Iran's biggest celebrities, she is well known for her support of women's rights. General Suleimani was broadly thought of as a conservative, but he took care not to align himself with any political faction in Iran or take sides in domestic disputes, allowing him to be seen as above politics. He's someone who had a depth and breadth of relationships within the Iranian system that allowed him to work with all key players, Ms. Tabatabai said. She cited his close working relationship with Iran's foreign minister, Mohammad Javad Zarif, who is seen as a moderate. Every major political actor within Iran, from reformist to hardliner, is saying this is a great loss, she said. Iran announced a three-day funeral procession for General Suleimani which began on Saturday in Baghdad and then moves to other cities in Iraq. The procession will continue in Mashhad, Iran on Sunday and Tehran on Monday, where Ayatollah Khamenei will pray over the general's body at Tehran University. Then on Tuesday it will go to his hometown, Kerman, for burial. Iranian media reported that he left a will asking for a simple burial there. An enormous turnout is expected, and leaders of militant groups from across the region are expected to attend the services, several people with knowledge of the planning said. Many Iranians, whether they like the regime or not did consider Suleimani as a sort of national symbol, said Raz Zimt, an Iran specialist at the Institute for National Security Studies in Tel Aviv, and they see his assassination as something that hurts national pride. Mahmoud Dalatabadi, a prominent Iranian author who has spoken out for artistic freedom, wrote that, Iran once again lost one of its most honorable children. Since Mr. Trump's withdrawal from the nuclear deal, Iran has revived its nuclear program in stages, amid escalating conflicts with the United States. The European signers of the agreement promised to find a way to offset the effects of the sanctions, but so far have failed. Hints at renewed negotiations with Washington have gone nowhere. The moderates were already on life support before the killing of General Suleimani, Mr. Nazar said, and Iran will hold legislative elections next month. I would guess the hardliners are going to do very well. This kind of pressure on Iran, just like in any country, plays into the hands of the security forces.